What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Codex Station Comic Character of the Week. I, as usual, I am Sal, this lab guy, your host for this episode. And as always, with me is Dan the Man Kelly, formerly of Instagram, now live on Instagram, and also Tim the Terrible Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> How are you guys doing tonight? Good, very good. Glad to be a part of tonight's episode. Glad you could actually finally make episode. it. Yes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we were going to start this episode about like 9.30 Eastern Time. Yeah, It is now 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Not fun. <laughs> Not fun at all. But, but, anyhow, we're let's, but we're here. So let's go ahead and let's do, a, do our introductions. As I said, I am Sal, this lab guy. When I'm not here on the Codex Station, you can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner. So go check that out. Down below, we got Dan and Man Kelly. Why don't you tell them where, you can find, where they can find you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. I post there a few times a week, so go check it out and give me a follow. I'm working my way to 800 followers, and I also post the question of the day on the Facebook group Comic Character of the Week that was started by Archduke Kevy. So, who is and still only, um, on the mend? What did yeah. you say? He's still on the mend. He should be back yeah. soon. Yep, he'll be back for next week's. Can't yeah, wait! Forward. Can't wait! And I also run the uh, comic character of the day uh, Instagram page, so go check that one out too. Right, and then very good. Wi-Fi here has oh. something going on other than terrible Wi-Fi. Ah, yes. that is true. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I usually don't sit here. Jamie's in this spot. We're Archduke Kevy, for that matter. Both of them are out this week. But you know me, Tim the Terrible, right here with the Codex Station. Ladies and gentlemen, all you got to do to find us on your favorite social media platform is type in at the Codex Station, and that is where we will be, also where we're live streaming right now. If you haven't done it yet, make sure to give us a like, share, subscribe, follow wherever you're seeing us right now. It definitely helps with the algorithm, uh, and we are so close, so close to 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, we are 26 away as of right now, this recording. So help us get there. When we get to 1,000, we've got a super huge giveaway that we're going to do. Jamie and I are going to give you some more information on that in the days coming in the future. So stick around, be a part of it, and be a part of something awesome, guys. Once again, at the Codex Station for all your Codex needs. One of us. Awesome. One of us. <laughs> I was giving All right. away his um, slab wall to whoever wins. I'm not uh, giving away the whole slab wall. No, 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 no. Fucking their pick? Because, yeah. <laughs> I got, I'm not sure what I... Here we go. I'll give you the contents of this box. Ooh. It's hmm. probably empty if he's holding it like that. Lame. <laughs> that was <such> trash. Jeez. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. All right, Dan, who are we diving into tonight? All right, so tonight we are talking about Captain America, my all-time favorite character who first appeared back in March 1941 in Captain America issue one, created by the legendary, the great Joe Simon and Jack Kirby with one of the best introduction covers of all time, who's punching Hitler in the face. You just don't get better than that. Um so I think due to the movies and everything, we all know his origin by this point, but let's go over it real quick. Steve Rogers was classified for F and un, in, uh, unable to enlist in the military during World War II. So he volunteered for Project Rebirth, which was a classified secret army project uh, to create a super soldier. He was the one that was chosen, and Dr. Erskine, Erskine. Uh, Erskine. Right. Erskine. 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 Yeah, Erskine. that sounds right. I'm going to try this one more um, time. Go on. <laughs> he, um... <laughs> Here we go. Now we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim will be disappearing from time to time. Don't mind it. <laughs> I'm around. Go ahead. I'm he, sorry. He uh, uh, made Steve Rogers a super soldier with the intent that there was going to be a whole unit full of them, but then he was killed by a Nazi spy before he could do that. So Steve became the one, the only super soldier, became Captain America, fought World War II towards the end of the war, uh, was on a buzz bomb that blew up that we, at the time, for many years, had thought killed Bucky, frozen him in a block of ice, 
He was later found by the Avengers in modern day. Issue know, four, right? Yes, issue four. Yeah. But, you know, I say modern day because it's the shifting timeline for Marvel, which is great. And, um, yeah, he was thawed out, was considered a founding Avenger, and, you know, the rest is history. Uh, his, as far as his powers, because of the super soldier serum, he has um, enhanced physical abilities. So he has enhanced strength and reflexes and healing and all that. At one point, he did have super strength, but not for a long time. Uh, he's a master tactician. He is a skilled hand-to-hand -hand fighter, and he is, you know, a natural leader, one of the best, if not the best leader in all of comics. Okay. Yeah. All right. So before we actually jump into the nitty gritty, let's give a shout out to our sponsor, and that is W, w Energy. You want to go to WGG and check them out there. If you use the uh, keyword codex, that's COD hyphen X, you can save 10% on that order. It's a good, clean energy drink. There's no aftertaste, bad aftertaste. There's no jitters. There's no crash. There's a lot of flavors out there to try. It is a good energy drink. We all drink it here. Oh, yeah. We all love it. And I, we highly suggest it. So go check them out. That's www.wgg. That's a lot of Ds in there. <laughs> That's a lot of W. <laughs> That's a lot of W. Go check them out and use the uh, use the keyword codex. And don't okay. forget, dub, ladies. Dub, dub, dub. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, when you use that keyword, that does help the channel. So by all means, That's help very true. Out. Help us help you. There we go. Help us help you. All right. So let's jump into this and let's go with what scenarios uh, work best for this character. And Tim, why don't you go ahead and kick us off on that? So I think this is a no brainer uh, for the scenarios that work best. Uh, Captain America is the ultimate team player. Uh, he takes the the members of the team. He, he, he knows how to delegate. He knows how to utilize people's strengths and uh, minimize their weaknesses, right? So if, like with Spider-Man and insecurity and things like that, if Spider-Man is on the team, he utilizes Spider-Man's unique abilities and strengths, but minimizes his insecurity by pumping him up with positivity, man. The, the guy is good at it. He, mm -hmm. he knows, like with his master tactical abilities uh, and strategy, he knows how to position people in such a way to get the most out of them and get the most effective victory for the Avengers or whatever team he's with. Uh, he is always and should always be a leader. Uh, and even in crossovers with other companies, uh, Superman, when the Justice League and the Avengers crossed over, Superman said that Captain America was the one to lead this massive group of JLA and Avengers. He said, nobody else can do this but you. You lead them in there and take this. And he did it without question. He's self-sacrificing. Uh, he has no ego. Um, he's very humble. And he's very human, right? Even though he's enhanced and things like that, the, the man is as floor level as you can get. Even working in government agencies or massive teams or even just a regular team up, he's he's the best person to be next to. Very good. Very good. All right, Dan, why don't you tell us what you have, what's your feeling on this? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of along the same lines. Like he's you know, he's great as an individual character. Got some great runs on his books, but he's best when he's leading others, when he's inspiring others. Um, like you, I'm inspired. <laughs> yeah, like whether it's the Avenger, like you know, whether it's the Avengers or like you said, just big team ups. Like you know, you got characters like Thor, who's a god, and you know, these super smart scientists like Iron Man and Mister Fantastic, and you know, mm -hmm. you know, Hercules is a demigod, and you've got. You know, immortals like Cersei, and you've got like all these crazy powerful characters and all of them. And whenever there's something big going down, they're like, "That's all right. Listen to him." Do well, these me these people with egos larger than yeah. the planet ego itself, they still yeah. point to Steve. Jobs. I see what you exactly. did there. That was pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, they're like, "He's you know, all right." When like it, you know, even when the Avengers have like, "Okay, oh, Wasp is chairman now," or like Hawkeye's chairman, or this, like whenever something big goes down, like. Like Operation Galactic Storm, it's like, oh, okay, well, 
it doesn't matter who's leading now. Like he's, he's in charge. <laughs> I, you know, that's just how it is. Um, so I think that's how he works best. Even when they did that recent crossover, was it uh judgment day, the Avengers, mm-hmm. X-Men Eternals. Eternals. Yeah. Yep. You know, like you said, he sacrificed himself to save someone else. And then when the, um, you know, when the X-Men were using their resurrection protocol to bring someone back, Nightcrawl was like, oh, we got to bring this person back. And, you know, some of the other ones were arguing with them, like, no, Cyclops, you know, like, because Cyclops got killed. Like, we need Cyclops. You need to bring him back. And Nightcrawler went, no, you know, he may be our leader and he may be like, you know, the one all the mutes will rally around. But this is the guy that we need for everyone. And then the next thing you see is like him busting out of the, you know, the resurrection egg yeah. with the shield. Which you kind of question, like, why is he in this egg? Did they resurrect the shield too? Like, <laughs> it doesn't make much. Sense. But you know, the point was that's you know, even they looked at it like, okay, we're breaking all of our protocols to bring back this guy who's a non mutant because this is the guy that needs to lead everyone. Yeah. Right. Right. So, what about you? Well, let me just say that the shield thing was that's for dramatic effect. Yeah. Oh, it was dra- it was a cool image, but then when you think about it, you're like, that doesn't make any sense, any sense whatsoever. <laughs> so uh, you guys have like covered all the points I really was going to say. So, you know, he he's he's leading the team. He's got to be, you know, he's being a soldier. He's inspiring others. He's the perfect version of what everybody aspires to be. In yeah. A situation, you know, yeah. in any situation, you know, so. You know, when people are following his lead without question, you see these demigods and stuff like that following his lead without question. It's it's just obvious. This guy is born to lead, and he is a leader. And he's, you know, that's how he is. Yeah. That's how he is. And, and people don't even think twice about following him into hell and back. They're, right. they're like, Captain America's leading the right. team? Count right. me in. Right. He, he's someone that, you know, he's someone I think they all know when he's leading a team, there's nothing, they know that there's nothing he would ask them to do if he couldn't do it himself. Yeah. And right. if they fall, he's going to be the one that's there that says, get on your feet, soldier. We're not done yet. You don't fall until I say you can fall. Let's go. Right. Yeah. And that's they know right. he will not hesitate to sacrifice himself for anybody. Yeah. And, and yeah, like I think of, you know, and, you know, we've had, you know, discussions about this, you know, every comic fan has over the years, like, oh, who would be the best superhero if they were in real life? Like, I think, especially with the state of the world now, like this, oh, if you yeah. could like bring one character to life to inspire real people, like this would be the guy. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely. hundred percent. Definitely. And even in the MCU universe captured that, that, that essence yeah. where Sam Wilson was already out of the military. He was doing the work at the VA. Yeah. And he said, Captain America needs me. I, there's no better reason to get back in. Captain yeah. America needs me, you know? And yeah. then um, later in Age of Ultron, you know, he, they're fight, they're doing the big fight at the end. He's like, if you get hurt, hurt him back. If you get killed, walk it off, you know? Yeah. <laughs> when, he gave, when he gave the speech at the end of Winter Soldier, you know, and um, mm-hmm. and, and Falcon just looked at him, he's like, do you practice that or you just come up with that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it on the list. Yeah. I'll put it on the list. <laughs> All right, so let's. What's that? Go ahead. On your left. On your your left. left. On your left. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so now let's go ahead. Since we've talked about things that we liked about this character, what do we have that we don't like? And I'm going to start with you again, Tim, because Dan likes to. Dan, (laughs) he likes to pontificate with this stuff because it's his character, so he's going to go last. (laughs) I I think with the things that I don't like, I I know I use this often when I'm on here, but. but I'm not gonna, writers, no, the writers. I'm not going to blame it on them this time. Uh, I I think That's it's wrong. it's like the same problem with Superman. It's it's his gullibility sometimes, right? Uh, like as much of an inspiration he is, and as much of a hero and a leader and a, a humble person he is, sometimes he's gullible and uh, he he doesn't blindly follow his superiors, but he does follow orders. 
Um, and Secret War is a great example of that. Uh, it's a wonderful story. If you haven't read it, read it. Uh, and, and Bendis wrote that, and it's really, really good. But his gullibility is taken advantage of in there. And, and that's, in, that's like really the only nitpick I have with the character. The only thing I think that doesn't function very well with him. In, in the hands of the right writer, like with Bendis at this point, uh, it, it can be used as an awesome plot device. But uh, other times, you know, it's, it's wasted away. But as a character, the, with how he's been from beginning to present, his gullibility, I think, uh, loses okay. heat on the character more than anything else. Okay, very good. I, I, I'm a little bit different on this. I just don't like it when they try to make him something he's not. Mm -hmm. Let's say, let's say they have the evil version of Cap. Hail you Hydra. Know, Hail Hydra. That was just god awful terrible. Yeah. And, and when they, um, I think there was one point where the Red Skull had obtained the uh, brain of Xavier. And he oh, mind an uncanny him. Avengers. Yeah, and he mind controlled them, and then he was like, "Well, that's no fun because I didn't break them. It just I just told them to switch sides, you know, that type of thing, <laughs> you know." So, I mean, it's so I don't like it when they try to make him do things that he's not. I don't know. That's out of character. That's out of character for him. Really, I have no cons for what he is. I think the gullibility works with him as well. He's mm -hmm. almost too trusting, you know, in situations, yeah. you know, because. You get a killer up there and says, okay, I promise I'm not going to kill anybody again. And Cap would be like, okay, what's the first thing he's going to do? Bam. Okay, I promise I'm not going to do it again. About? Come on. Come on. <laughs> I, yeah, he I promise. He always sees the best in people. Yeah, he always sees the best in people. So maybe that is a, is a con in itself. So that's what I have. Dan, how about you? Pontificate, um, buddy. I, I don't like when they, when they make him question himself or his place in the world. Like, okay, it, it was fine to do it once or twice, but at this point, it's been so long. We don't need stories anymore where he questions his place in the modern world because of where he's mm -hmm. at. Like, he's been in the modern world long enough. You know, he's adjusted to it. He doesn't need to question if he has a place in it anymore. Like, you know, we've already moved past that. You don't need to go back to that well. The same thing with him questioning. Um, uh, I don't really, I don't know how to phrase it properly, but like him questioning maybe the government or the current state of America, like we, we don't need him, you know, he has an idealized version of America of what it should be, which is honestly something that even at its best is something that it never really was. And that's the way that the character should be. He's supposed to represent the best of what it could be, but we don't need stories of him continually questioning oh you know should i wear the should i represent the country i should do this or not because we've gotten that too many times you know it was great when they did the um the secret empire storyline and he became nomad you know for the first time it was great when that happened but we again that that's a well that you don't need to keep going back to it's already been done See, some sometimes when they do that, it works really, really well. Like in Civil War, when when he questioned, because that was the whole basis of his argument. Like he was questioning S.H.I.E.L.D. He was questioning the Superhero Registration Act. And he's like, if you start telling us what to do, then you start telling us who the bad guys are. And we can't do that. Once well, no, that happens, right. it changes. That's why like I, I, I don't slow. know if I'm phrasing it right. But like, I think it... You know, when they have him, you know, question, like I said, questioning when, you know, you know, all, you know, representing the country, you know, mm -hmm. because Captain America is at this point is really more than Captain America. Like, he, mm -hmm. you know, it should be Captain, you know, Captain Earth. Yeah. But, Cap well, there's a Captain Planet. So. Yeah. Well, that doesn't really have the nice ring to it. But, you know, <laughs> what I mean, like, you know, it's more than just America, but like where they have him question, you know, his patriotism mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, you know, yeah. they, that's been done. Um, the other criticism I have is anytime he's handled by Rob Liefeld. <laughs> oh, agreed. Agreed. The the rocket chest, the, the one that sticks way the hell out to here. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm gonna take the A off of the, the iconic A off of the mask, and I'm gonna put this weird 
bird thing on there, which was great because when Liefeld dropped out of Heroes Reborn and Jim Lee took over all the books, like the first thing he did in that issue is like, oh, Cap's got the A back. And he had and he had to him say something like, Yeah, this just feels right. There you go. Of course. <laughs> that's that's great. I love it. I agree right, with so- you though, Dan. Uh, I'm sorry, Sam. No, no, uh, good. I agree with you. Like when they make him question his patriotism, like to yeah. the country, he knows that the country can be horrible at times, but he also knows that the country can be really good, really great. And even though there's this amount of bad people, there's this amount of good people in the country, yeah. and that's what he fights for. And yeah, he and, knows that it's he knows that it's flawed, but he knows yeah. that the potential is there to be better, and that's what he fights for. Exactly. Exactly. I have to agree. I have to agree. All right, so now we're moving on to our next statement, which is three D of the badass moments that we have for him. I'll go ahead and kick this one off. I know Dan wants to go last for this one because he's got about 110 of them, and he wants to make sure that yeah, he doesn't duplicate us. Million. It's, it's like 8. <laughs> it's like 8,000. Anyhow, all right, million. so I'll go ahead and kick this off, and I'm going to start off with Thor number 390, and this is where he actually picks up Mjolnir for the first time to save Thor's life. Yeah. And he couldn't win, and I reread this part, and he was like, as he's lifting it, he can't believe he can lift it himself, because it was, you know, all of a sudden, these it, this hammer has become very light, and, no, and uh, even though much more powerful people than me have tried lifting it, they couldn't. So he, you know, in the story, he he goes on to save Thor with you know, by using the hammer and sending it over to him to save Thor. So I mean, it's just a badass moment. It was represented in the MCU, awesomely, yeah. I think, and I think it was um, a really good scene to see live. So my next badass moment I have, and Tim will probably <clears throat> like this one. This is one of the JLA Avengers crossover, and he was facing off with Batman. Yeah. And when he was facing off with Batman, they were doing this um, comparison to each other. I guess they I were know. dancing. Dude, they were dancing. <laughs> they were they were about to strike, and they're going through their usual uh, moves. A, to, faint, to, a block <laughs> to, to 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 test each other's waters out. Then Batman kind of figures out, okay, you may be able to beat me, but we're we must be more focused on beating the enemy. And Cap's like, you're right. You're I, I think right. Batman's no. words yeah. were, okay, you could. <laughs> Theoretically, beat me, but it would take days. <laughs> that was a third right. meetup of uh, Captain America and Batman. Mm-hmm. Right, right. But I think I think it kind of calls out the uh, the uh, you know he doesn't you know he, if he can avoid a fight he will avoid a fight yeah. you know type of situation he he's assessing the, the the situation constantly and he may always trying to make the best decision as possible. So also a badass moment. That's great. The last one I have was from. Uh, Civil War, Amazing Spider-Man number um, 537. And this is where he gives that River of Truth speech. Now, I didn't, I don't have it written out because it's a pretty long speech, but as speeches go, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. It's yeah. pretty much he's telling the person that even if you're doing something that everybody tells you was wrong and, you know, to just plant yourself like a tree next to a river and just not budge and tell everybody else they have to budge if they they have to move if they tell you to move you plant Mm. yourself like a tree and say no no you move you move exactly it's a huge long speech but it is well worth well worth the read and it it can inspire anybody to tell you the truth after reading that i think wasn't wasn't that the speech he gave to spider-man when spidey was like switching sides from iron man to Mm -hmm. him yeah he was like kind of debating on whether to do it right yeah, exactly, exactly, and it actually calls out. I think a little bit of like even when everybody's like telling you what's wrong is right, you know, you, you know, you got to figure out for yourself that that's not right type of situation. Yeah. You know, they're trying to like if you're bringing brainwash to tell you that that what is wrong is right, you can't do that. You got to plant yourself and say no, that's not. In the, no matter what the consequences are. Yeah. All right. So that's my three badass moments. Tim, what do you got for us? Uh, So uh, my first badass moment, we're going to stay in Civil War, but we're going to go to the beginning uh, Mm -hmm. when he's standing there on the helicarrier with Maria Hill. And Maria Hill comes up and basically demands him to start going after his friends, the superheroes. (coughs) 
one by one and uh if they refuse to turn themselves in to arrest them and that is where he's like nope not gonna do it that goes against everything the masks stand for and maria hill's got this really cocky look on her face and she's basically like i don't care what you say you're either gonna do it or you're a fugitive too and uh, he's yeah and he's like once you start telling us what to do who the bad guys are then you determine who they are and it's right before shit hits the fan when he looks at these guys and he says boys i am not responsible for what happens next if you do not stand down and maria hill says take him and he beats the snot out of all of them jumps out the window uses the shield to stick in the cockpit of this f-18 and this the pilot says holy blank and he's like watch your mouth sailor uh land us over here and buys the guy a cheeseburger come on that you can't get more badass than that 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 was me coming back into comics after being out for a long time and reading something like that i was like why did i ever leave oh that's right because of spider-man um no, we won't get into that that's that's a different episode please exactly <laughs> Uh, badass moment number two is even though uh, I dislike the issue itself, the scenes that it happens in are completely awesome. And that is the Captain America versus Wolverine fight. Uh, you, you've got probably the one of the most feral uh, mutants that is out there right now that, that has a code that he breaks regularly. Uh, and you've got the most immovable object in heroes for marvel going against each other the cover is iconic i hope one of you guys chose that for covers of the week uh please bring that down dan and show that uh this right here the cover alone is magical i mean just look at that guys the yes. captain america is being as aggressive as Wolverine is, and there's fire coming off of the strike from the adamantium claws on the vibranium shield. That is wonderful. That is badass on its own. Uh, I got a print of that from Mike Zach. God, that's so good. That's nice. <laughs> and uh, badass moment number <laughs> three. Jeez, um, I in in comic form. I, I think it would have to be Secret War when uh, he confronts Nick Fury about what Nick Fury did. If you haven't read it, I'm not going to spoil too much of it for you. But just know that Captain America blasts through this hospital door and he looks at Nick Fury, points his finger at him and he goes, what did you do? How dare you do this to me? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he walks up and clocks him right in the mouth. Mm -hmm. uh you don't do that to nick fury life yeah. model decoy or not you don't do that <laughs> and captain america walked right up to him and dropped him and i was like whoa all right <laughs> so that's what i got for my three all right dan well give us your eight thousand <laughs> all right well i had a couple of them that you had i had the i had them lifting the owner i had it you know the speech to spider-man because that's just and it was, I think that that was when uh, J. Michael Straczynski was writing Spider Man, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Who yep. is speaking over as the new writer of Captain America? So hopefully we'll get some good, good new speeches. Hopefully he'll come back to Spider Man. Yeah, I liked it. Um, I liked it. Ultimate, uh, the Ultimates issue one when he like, and they kind of did it in the movie too, where he like leapt out of the plane. So yeah. one of the soldiers, did he have a parachute? And you know, Bucky no. like, was like, no, he, uh, you know, he thinks so. He did. <laughs> when they're having a big fight and they say something about surrendering and he points he's like do you think this letter on my head he's like surrender do you think this letter on my head stands for france <laughs> that's that's me that's so uh, me freedom fries and freedom yeah. toast ladies yeah. and gentlemen so i'll just run through the ones i got real quick because i got a bunch of, i got avengers 4 when he wakes up from being frozen in the ice and immediately by the avengers and immediately beats all of the Avengers. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, this guy's really Captain America. Yeah. Um, I got a couple from Civil War uh, that you didn't mention. I got Civil War issue seven um, when he beats Iron Man, you know, and, and then looks around and sees the destruction around them and surrender, even though he won, 
and he surrenders and everybody else on his side is like, no, can't, like we got him. We got him. He's like, no, he's like, look around like we didn't win. Even though his side won, he re- was winning. He realized like, look, yeah. look at the damage we've done. Like this, you know, this is not what we were, yeah. this is not what we fight for. That was right. really divisive for fans at the time too. But I agreed with him. I was on team cap the whole way through and when yeah, that happened, too. you at first you're like, what? No, don't quit. Wait a minute. No, he's making sense. He, he's yeah. making sense right now. Yeah, he's like, look, he's like, look at what we've done. This is not what you know what we're supposed to be about. And then you know, after Civil War, when he was arrested and was being taken into federal court for trial, and when he got killed, you know, because it's common, um, he stepped in front of a sniper's bullet that to save a U.S. Marshal that was going to hit the Marshal, and he steps in front of it. So even though this guy's got him in cuffs and walking him into the courthouse to be, you know, to be arraigned, he still puts himself in front of a bullet to save him. And I mean, like, that's quintessential Captain America right there. Um, yep. I also got the end of Secret Empire, when, which, oh, God, what a terrible story. story <laughs> had to be on it. Uh, when he was fighting the Hydra Cap, who had a armor powered by the cosmic cube cap beats him lifts me owner again just just epic wow. um and captain america 254 he decapitated baron blood with his shield that was <laughs> if you haven't read that that was pretty you know he's right down on him and that's that world's short one uh, nazi vampire after that there you go. <laughs> and then I say my favorite one for Cap was from Infinity War issue four when oh, yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. When they were, you know, when the heroes go into space, and of course you look at the heroes that go into space to fight, and it's like Thor and Nova and Silver Surfer and like all Psych- these X Factor. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, and Captain America. And Thanos has run through all of the other heroes. He's beaten them all. Captain America's last man standing. He doesn't have his shield. His like feet are stuck in the ground by by this rock. And Thanos comes up to him and they're standing face to face, you know, and Cap's looking at him. And Thanos, you know, says I forget exactly what he says to him. He's laughing at him. Yeah, he's laughing at him. And Cap just look at him sternly and says, you know, like as long as one of us stand is like, as long as someone is left to stand against you, you'll never win. This is, you know, Captain America standing against the guy that's got all the infinity stones is essentially God at that point, mm-hmm. And he still won't stand down and won't flinch. I mean, that's just, that's as badass as badass gets. That's so good. Yeah, yeah I agree. You, you I look agree. at that panel. Ron Lim did such it's a like, great job. It's like this long panel. Yeah. It's, it's a short panel, but you got Cap on one side and Thanos on the other, and then they he starts walking towards him. It's yeah. wonderful. And he doesn't flinch at all. Doesn't move. Awesome. Because he can't. Which, awesome. Which, and they kind of show that, not, not that exact thing in the movie, but you know, when he starts fighting Thanos. Yeah. And he's like pushing yeah. back against the glove, and Thanos is like, who's this guy? Yeah, and he actually and, uh, end, got end a little game. bit for a minute. Yeah, not Endgame, yeah. Infinity War. It's right, Infinity, Infinity War. War yeah. yeah, right. Because you could actually see the look on, on Thanos' face when he was like, "Wait a minute, what?" Hey, hold yeah. on a second. <laughs> <laughs> and also, if you noticed in the MCU in, in Endgame, after he actually had cut Cap's leg with the sword, Cap still gets up and he does that shield tightening on oh, the yeah, strap. He's like, yeah, it's like, oh like that yeah. and you can see Thanos go look at him like what the did I just cut him with my sword and he's still getting up I could see that look on his face yeah oh, and I don't so know about you guys but when I saw that in the theater you know I saw it like right when it opened and the scene when he picks when when Mjolnir hits Thanos and it flies back <laughs> and when the camera pans and shows Captain America the theater I was in just erupted in cheers my theater yeah. lost its mind <laughs> yep I wish I had that was on my phone because everybody's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. My that's my theater was great. the same way. I walked out of that. I walked out of the movie, and I texted my buddy. You know, I was like, I'm not going to give any spoilers away for the movie. It was awesome. All I'm going to tell you is there's a scene at the end that I really hope that they make a T-shirt of because I will immediately buy it. <laughs> and when you see the scene, you'll know what it is. 
Yeah, oh. it was that one. Wow. Spoilers, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <if you> haven't <laughs> seen the game yet. Yep. Thanos demands your silence. Anyhow. All right. So <laughs> on to our next uh, segment is top covers. Each of us has chosen three covers. So we're going to show this to you, Tim. Go ahead and kick us off on that, and I will go next, and Dan can follow up with his 8,000 covers. All right. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take a peek here. So let's go ahead and start right on the left. You have Captain America. uh, I believe that's 284. Uh, That cover, to me, is incredibly iconic, and I believe that's Mike Zeck. It is. Uh, who who is yep. bar none uh, one of the best, if not the best, Captain America artists ever. Uh, but that right there, you usually see that pose for Daredevil or Spider-Man or Batman, but with Captain America looking over the city of New York, the American flag down below, uh, yep. that he is poised and ready to defend the country, the, the world. This this is an iconic cover. I don't have this in my collection, but it is definitely what I want. Uh, right in the middle is a Daredevil cover, and this was shown to me by somebody at the comic shop that I work at. My guys' comics in Clinton, Tennessee, ladies and gentlemen, support your local comic shop. Uh, Daredevil number forty three. Uh, it and the thing that I love about this the most uh, is right at the bottom. It says guest starring. You know who in the battle of the year they didn't even have to tell you who it was you automatically knew and this check out those boots right this is beautiful (laughs) jack kirby artwork and that it is fist coming right at you it is so gorgeous to look at uh jack kirby shorts aside uh (laughs) dynamic this is iconic. This is wonderful. And that fist is coming off of the page right at you. And then the yeah. next one, I think, shows a different side of Captain America. And this is Captain America 332. Uh, this is Captain America No More. You've you've got the, the destruction of the flag behind him. It looks like it's bleeding or torn. Uh, and you have Captain America just... It looks like he's utterly defeated, but but even then he's not on his knees, he's on his feet. And it's it's just it, it's a darker side, but a side nonetheless. Again, drawn by Mike Zek. Uh absolutely wonderful cover. Uh this I, I think all three of these speak to the different eras of Captain. Yeah, they're, they're awesome I'm, covers. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that one was when was when he stopped being Captain America and they made um and they made uh, Jack Daniels the new. Yeah, the, the who becomes U.S. agent, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, the, but Captain America had that black costume first. Yeah, you know, he was just called yep. the captain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that, the right. captain. Yeah, great storyline too. Yeah, it was. Yes, okay. indeed. Who's next, Sal? You? I, I, yep, I am next. Bring up mine, please. All right, there you go. All right, so I got. I'll start on the left side. Captain America, this is volume 10, number zero, uh, the A cover. Uh, the artist is, of course, okay. Alex Ross, who is magical when he put when he put stuff on paper, you know? Yeah. And I, just, I, I love the effect with the uh, lava just coming around the, the shield, like just bouncing off around him. It's just oh, yeah. it's a great picture. And I still think, uh, Cy- I think he shops at the uh, same store Cyclops shops at Bruce Boots. So just saying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. I, real quick, I gotta correct myself. I said Jack Daniels, John Walker. That was you. John Walker. I yeah, John Walker, long, Jack Daniels. Uh, yeah, I named the long whiskey for the for U.S. agent's alternate ID. I was gonna say something, but I was like, well, wait a minute, maybe he. I was like, I wait, it's not Jack Daniels. It's, it's John Walker. Oh you had me stuck on alcohol, so I was just <laughs> <laughs> I went off on a tangent there. My mind did so. All right, so my next cover here is Captain America three eighty three. Uh, this one is Ron Lim, uh, uh, cover artist, and this is classic. This is iconic to me with the flag in the background. Yeah. Even though the star is a bit huge on the chest, but it's just 
it's perfect the way this was. If you look down in between the legs, you can see the twin towers, and just to the uh, his right is the Statue of Liberty as well. So yeah. it's the whole New York skyline there, and that's that's an awesome book, and it is on my short list to be slabbed. I have that cover as well. That's so a gorgeous that, cover. It yeah. is. It is. I almost wish it was like foily. If it was like like gold foil in the background, that would be amazing. Ooh. Well, they're releasing foil covers for so much stuff now. Maybe they'll do maybe, that one eventually. <laughs> maybe they will. Maybe they will. All right. Then my last cover here is Captain America number 100. So this one, of course, is, you know, a Jack Kirby, Sid Shores, Sam Rosen type cover. Mm. And it's just, it's classic. It was, you know, it's just amazing to me. So I love this cover. That's great. That And, and that's uh, the start of his ongoing, right? That is correct. They yeah. started at 100. Yep. Nice. All, All right, right, Dan. Why don't you talk about your 5,000 covers that you've got here? <laughs> oh, Dan got, did choose it. I just got yes. it. Yep, I got the Captain America Annual 8 uh, by I have... uh, by Mike Zeck. I mean, that's just such a, like Tim would say, it's such a dynamic cover. You see Wolverine, which he's in my favorite Wolverine costume, the brown yeah. suit. You know, yeah. you know, the claws hitting his shield, the electricity coming off, you know, you, it's just it's such an amazing awesome but, cover but look at cap like he is not yeah. back and down like that shield is not coming up as a defensive posture it looks more like offense like they're both yeah. doing offense at the same time yep i and have then, that book slabbed as well it's great oh. and then uh you know uh i also had captain america 383 like sal like you say it's just it's such an iconic cover an iconic pose it's drawn by Ron Lim. It's inked yeah. by Jim Lee. There's nothing else really to say, you know, from what Sal is. Just it's iconic. Mm -hmm. And then I got Captain America number one from um, uh, the John Cassidy did from the series, uh, the Marvel Knight series, a few years back. It just looks like a World War II recruitment poster, and. You know, I think it really Close. represents Cap. Like, you know, he's got the flag, he's raising the shield, the troops are running in, the planes are, you know, behind him, and you know, it just, it just screams patriotism and soldier. Oh yeah, yeah. by U.S. war bonds. Yeah, yes. this is the first time I think I've actually picked three covers that I actually have all the covers <laughs> in my collection. That's For every cool. bond that you buy, it puts a bullet in your man's gun. That's right. <laughs> Get old Hitler right in the jaw. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. Let's move on to our next one, which is our essential readings. Okay. So we went through and we picked out readings that we everybody thinks that you should read for Captain America. If you've never read Captain America before, here's where you got to start. And I can't believe there's someone out there that has not read Captain America <laughs> or anything about it. But here's three we should start off. And Tim, go ahead and start us off with that. Well, Sal, new readers are coming in all the time, and what better place for them to get uh, recommendations than from us right here at the Codex Station. So yes. uh, let's start right at the top. Captain America, Volume 5, Numbers 1 through 6. This is the Out of Time storyline. This is the volume that takes place during Civil War, that takes place during uh, another epic storyline, which I think Dan or Sal, either one of you are going to talk about in the future uh, or, or uh, later in this episode, but uh, the, the Winter Soldier storyline, but this one through six out of time. Guys, this is absolutely amazing. Ed Brubaker uh, did the writing for this, and it is wonderful. Uh, spy thriller, uh, international, uh, yeah, it just everything it's it's good i i can't speak enough about how good volume five as a whole is but one through six starts with a bang and it just does not stop if you want modern captain america in his own title volume five is the one you need to choose yeah, uh, yeah. anything brew baker writes you need to read anyways but uh especially what he does with captain america and winter soldier um right down in the middle civil war uh that again more modern captain america i think i focused more on that because i knew you guys would bring in some really awesome classic stuff uh but uh civil war i think is one of the best modern marvel uh epic events uh there was a lot of effort put into this by mark millar 
uh, and and the artist. I can't remember his name right offhand. Um, but uh, John Cassidy. John Cassidy. Thank you. You when this came out, you were either Team Captain America or yep. Team Iron Man. And they really oh, split yeah. it down the middle. And char- characters that were loved by everybody chose sides that we didn't think they would choose, like Spider Man. But then they eventually flip. There, if you want Captain America stripped down to the essentials of what he is as a person and as a hero, and have them all put to the test. Civil War is the one for you. It's six issues. You you don't really need to read the secondary stuff. You can read just the main story and get quite a bit out of that. Uh, and then, obviously, uh, Captain America, as we said in the beginning, is best as a team leader. And New Avengers uh, is uh, what you should read there for modern Captain America 1 through 6 Breakout. Uh, David Finch does the artwork and it is absolutely wonderful after Avengers disassembled and Hawkeye was killed uh, and the team kind of separated for a while cap and uh, Iron Man came back together reformed a team uh, but only because of the title of the the storyline breakout Uh, Rikers prison got uh, broken into all these villains escape and uh Captain America assembles a team of Iron Man, Luke Cage, Spider-Man, Wolverine, uh, and more. Uh, even tried to recruit Daredevil, and Daredevil turned him down. But uh, yeah, th- these right here, New Avengers Volume 1, 1 through 6, definitely read that. Great stuff. Written by Ben. Just, D- Daredevil just couldn't see himself teaming up. That is also true. <laughs> yeah, because it was like all the heroes that just kind of randomly showed up yeah. To stop the breakout, and Cap was like, "All right, well, we should be a team. We should be the Avengers, and the new Avengers." And yeah, you know, all of them were like, "Okay, this is what Cap says." Yeah, except Daredevil was like, "Nah." Oh, and Spider Woman <laughs> too. She was on the team. Yeah. Yeah. All awesome. right. Who's next? Uh, that will be me. Oh, I was gonna right. save Dan's for last because he there likes to. Go. All right. Here we are. So we have Captain America Volume Two. This is Operation Rebirth. 332 to 350. And I believe we've touched on this a little bit before, but this story came out and, you know, this, uh, his super serum was uh, degenerating, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it turns out that the Red Skull was actually able to save him, but he was saving him for a condition to help him fight another enemy. So this, I like that because it was almost like, okay, he has to team up with like his arch nemesis, his main villain, <laughs> you know, and, what are you just think of the consequences of seeing saying people to see you're teaming up with Red Skull? Like, what are you doing? What How are you, you doing? Do that? <laughs> so, this was definitely a good read. Uh, this is volume two, um, issues 444, 448, and then 450 to 454, according to my notes. This came out in 1995, by the way. So, it, it's definitely a good story to check out. Uh, next on my list, of course, is Civil War. Tim, you pretty much hit this. Right on the you know nail on the head, so I don't need to really devolve into that too much. But Civil War, the first one, there's there's, there's so much depth to that story. Yeah. Uh, just reading it once is not enough. You know, <laughs> read right. it read it a couple of times, and you can see the depth of the characters in this book, especially with Cap. And you're right, right. So fans were divided on that too. They did oh, yeah. with that. Yep. They would and argue with to... the about it. I have to say, I was actually Team Iron Man when it first came out. Sal. Yep. Sal, I don't know you, who you are anymore. <laughs> just if you're looking at it from a, well, I don't want to devolve too much into it, but if you're looking at it from a high Everybody's level perspective. Everybody's read this by now. <laughs> I know. If you're looking at it from a high level perspective, knowing what people's abilities are out there to, you know, have some type of response for is probably needed, you know? But. You're right, it's a slippery slope. It goes downhill, yeah. and I, you know, I totally side with Team Cap. But in the beginning, I think I was Team Iron Man. This was one of those series where fans were on either side of the line in the sand, and it, right, it, it was awesome to be a comic fan at this time. Yeah, right, right, all right. For my last one, I've got. Um, where is it? Oh, you know what? Did we? Cap- uh, Captain did America, three thirty-two through three fifty. Yes, that is it. The captain. He didn't put up the uh, the actual title to it. He put just put the issues. 
Hey, you know, Let I gave him the, I gave him the, I gave him the title. It's called the Captain. <laughs> so this is when, uh, you know, Captain America is no more type of thing. This issue was like 18 parts or something like that. But he's being forced to retire or become a government sponsored agent, and mm -hmm. he kind of comes out about you know how the. Uh, Government is not, you know, looking out for the best interests. This is yeah. this is the whole line in the sand. This is the epic cap thing, you know. Even though he's all for America and supporting it, he realizes that it's flawed. But he's still going to stick to his ideals that it can be better, you know. And yeah. this is what so when he be, gives up the Captain America mantle, and becomes the captain. So issues. Uh, this is also volume one, three thirty two to three fifty. Um, definitely check this out. Yeah, it's kind of along along the thing with what he said in Civil War. He's like, I'm not going to be an agent for you. Like, I'm not going to do, you know, just yeah, be someone right. who's going to do what you, you know, just what you say. Like, I'm going to go where I'm needed. Yeah, exactly. 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 And they even captured that in the MCU as well when they were yeah. fighting there. He's like, well, you know, so who decides that? And then, you know, who decides where we, we got to go somewhere? And they say, no, we can't go, you know. Yeah. So it's just one yeah. of those things. So, all right, Dan, what, what 5,000 stories do you have for us today? <laughs> There's three. So, yeah, I'll start at the top. Um, this one is called War and Remembrance. It was Captain America, Volume 1, Issues 247 to 255. Um, it's not one continuous storyline. It's uh, the, um, the nine issues that were written by Roger Stern and drawn by john byrne and they're collected in a graphic novel and it's just it's fantastic um he fought machine smith and dragon man and bat rock mm. mr hyde and uh what i what i said earlier about baron blood he fought baron blood in this and the original union jack died and there was a new union jack introduced and um there were new characters that were introduced this character named bernie who ended up becoming his girlfriend for a while was introduced in this and was this when Battlestar was introduced to? No, no, this was this was many, oh, yeah. many years before. Um, ah, okay. Yeah, this was many years before before that happened. Um, because that was that was in like the three hundreds. Okay. Um the the next one I have, uh like Sal said, Operation Rebirth. It was uh Captain America four forty four to four forty eight. And then um, 449 was a um, – Sal already went over it pretty well. And then 449 was a tie-in issue with a crossover. And then 450 to 454 was uh, Man Without a Country, which was by the same creative team. It was Mark Wade and Ron Garney. And they were put on the book just um, like, okay, we need someone to do these basically to fill out the issues of this run before we stop the book and restart it with um, with Heroes Reborn. But they did such a good job on it with this story, with both of these storylines. And it was loved so much that when Heroes Reborn ended, they brought both of them back when they relaunched the book again and made them the creative team again. And nice. Yeah. It's just, it's absolutely fantastic. And Captain America, you know, as great as Mark Grunewald's run was on it, it was you know, not great towards the end. You got the Cap Wolf stuff, which, you know, me and Tyler made fun <laughs> bringing of. him back, though. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> that book but, actually you know, went up in value. You know, There's... they had, like Sal said, where, you know, the, the Super Serum Soldier was kind of killing them, and they had him in this, like, terrible-looking armor. Soon. Oh, I know. Yeah, it's just, it, it was not great towards the end, and Mark Wade came in and, like, really breathed fresh life into it. I have a couple of those issues. I'm looking at my CLZ right now. When does Operation Rebirth start? Uh, issue 444. Yeah. 444. I and have... he's not even in that issue. The great part about that issue is it's he's not in it until the last page. Excuse me. Hmm. The Avengers are having to are having to sh uh, show up um, to handle something where these terrorists are holding the president hostage and demanding Captain America and the agent that's in charge of it on site is saying, what's the big deal about him? And then like all the Avengers from Hercules to giant man to even like death bird at the time and Quicksilver wow. are all saying like, how dare you? You don't know who you don't know who this guy is. Like, how dare you say something like that? <laughs> so it, it was great because <coughs> you really saw 
what all of the people around him thought of him. Nice. And then the the last one, Winter Soldier. I mean, it's just they did something that. Um, now this is the storyline that takes place after <coughs> the after the one that I had, right? Yeah, but I yeah. think like the one you had, like they kind of started laying the seeds for it. So yeah, you really need to read that and this. So essentially, you need uh, that Captain America run issue one to fourteen to like yeah. get the where the seeds are laid for it all the way through the actual storyline. But it's the one where they brought Bucky back, who you know for years in comics everyone was like, oh, nobody stays dead except for Bucky and Uncle, Uncle Ben. ben. <laughs> and it's like, oh well, now it's just Uncle Ben. So <laughs> they brought him back, but in a in a industry where everyone gets brought back with the dumbest reasons, Ed Brubaker came up with a fantastic way to break him to bring him back that made sense, that made a really a really great storyline that had a lot of impact. Yeah, and man. um yeah, Steve, Steve, yeah, a lot of drama. Steve Epting did the artwork on it and which was fantastic and it became the basis for you know the second captain america movie which is some will argue the best mcu movie i don't know if yeah. it's the best but i mean it's definitely top five. Oh yeah oh and one thing too about operation rebirth that was great um that was in that book they also brought back sharon carter who had been presumed dead for years Ooh. in the captain america book and they brought her back and she was much different than she was when she was around the first time. Wow. Okay. Awesome. All right. This is some good readings, guys. Here, so here at the Codex Session, we recommend that you read every issue of Captain America. <laughs> Just to ever make published. sure you yeah. ever publish. So you make sure you have it all. Even the Cap Wolf stuff that Dan highly recommends, you've got to read it. <laughs> Just pick one <laughs> issue and start from there. Yes, yes. All right, for our next segment now, we're going to go to Best Order, Author and Artist. Now, this is not necessarily a combo, ladies and gentlemen. This is just who we think of that when we picture Captain America, who's our best author and who's our best writer, um, artist. So, Dan, I'm going to let you start this one because you've called last now on all our, all our choices tonight. <laughs> so why don't you go first and kick us off with that? Well, I got to be super lame because I couldn't narrow it down to one. Oh. So <laughs> for right, for I, writing, I think I'm going to have to go as much as I really wanted to say like Brew Baker. I, for me, I got to go with Mark Wade because, mm -hmm. like I said, he brought Cat back from not being not so great for a while, and then we had the Abomination that was Captain America: Heroes Reborn, and then when they relaunched it, it was Mark Wade again, and he had a pretty good long run on it. It was just. Just fantastic. It had hiccups here and there, like every every great run does, but it was really good. Of course. I thought he really captured um, you know, the essence of who Captain America is. But artist is the one where I couldn't really narrow it down. So <laughs> to me it, and I, I I made it, you know, because it would be easy to say like Jim Lee because he drew him once, or like George Press because he drew him in Avengers. But I tried to narrow it down to just artists that had worked on his solo books. Mm. So for me, it was a tie between uh, Ron Lim and John Byrne. <laughs> John Byrne draws a great cat, but Ron Lim was the one that was drawing him. Like when I really first started um, reading him a lot. Yeah. But I also have to say, Mike Zek is the best cat cover artist because he's just True. got so many just iconic mm. cat covers. Yeah, it's definitely hard to choose just one. All right, Tim, what you got? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so, so for writer, uh, it it was a no-brainer for me. I, I did not read much of uh, Mark Wade's Captain America run, but I did read all of Ed Brubaker's. And to me, Ed Brubaker is the quintessential Captain America writer. Uh, what he did uh, with Volume 5 and bringing back uh, Bucky... Uh, as the Winter Soldier, the, the amount of drama and action and uh, just epicness in that story was amazing. And what Brubaker continued to do with Captain America was fantastic. For a modern writer, I think Brubaker is is tops for me. Uh, as far as artist goes, it has to be Mike Zek. Uh, I don't think anybody is more iconic with Captain America than Mike Zek is. Uh, every cover you see in the 80s uh, is a classic cover. 
Uh, I mean, like from the the Captain America annual to the 25th anniversary uh, Captain America that you see on there. It's just got him smiling like on Dan's shirt uh, and so many more. All the, the Vote for Cap. Two of the three <laughs> covers that I showed. Yeah, look at that. That's amazing. Well, uh, this, but, this is John Bernard. Right. Yeah. But but what I'm saying is, is like the 25th anniversary, he's got that same kind of pose. He's just yeah. sitting there smiling. Smile, Captain. We're going to take a picture for you for your school photo. <laughs> All right, cool. All done. Uh, yeah. So Ed Brubaker is the writer. Mike Zek is the artist. I, I think that is hands down uh, the best for me. Sal, what about okay. You? All right, so I'm gonna you know jump right to artist because Dan and I were exactly the same. I had John Byrne and Ron Lim. Boom. <laughs> you know, uh, I have to throw an honorable mention in for Alex Ross because some of his covers are just yeah. You know, like I said, he he his stuff is just amazing. Uh, for writer, I solidly went with Mark Wade. Um, hmm. There, Brew Baker, I liked as well, and actually, I even liked a little bit of Grinwald stuff in the beginning. Uh, like. Dan said the later stuff where Cap Wolf, that stuff I think is writing kind of. Well, Grunewald was Captain America for like 10 years. So I don't care how good a writer you are. Like after 10 years, you're going to have some hiccups, especially towards the end. Yeah, true. I agree. Some fantastic stuff like the, the, um, the street, uh, the street, the poison one was really good. And, um, yep, yep, yep. The bloodstone one was really good. True. So, but, (laughs) <laughs> I went with Mark Wade because if I if I'm thinking Cap, I have Mark Wade and John Byrne as my artist and author. Nice. I think Brubaker was really good at like the um political intrigue and like the yeah. um espionage the spy stuff. thriller stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah. Mark was more of like the big superhero action stuff while still mm-hmm. having some of that other stuff in there. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, good choices tonight, guys. Uh, this is going to wrap up this episode. So, uh, do we have any final thoughts on Captain America? Uh, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if if you want good superhero stuff, Captain America is the place to start. If you're new to comics, start with Captain America. Uh, he is, as Dan says, <coughs> the representation of what this country should be, and it's showcased in nearly every issue of captain america that you read uh the the man does not back down he will not let you back down and you will be inspired uh when you're done reading single stories and runs and epics and events that have captain america as a main or even supporting character uh it's very few characters bring out that type of emotion when you read them. Superman to me is one. Captain America is another. And it, yeah, I agree. Definitely pick it up. I agree. Dan, any final thoughts? Yeah. I mean, like I said, Cap is my favorite character. He's been my favorite character for pretty much whenever I decided, you know, I was like, I should have a favorite character. And I really had to think of who it was, <laughs> um, but you know, um, there's a reason, that, like I said, there's a reason that he is always leading no matter what the crisis is. There's a reason that, you know, like every crossover, every major storyline that Marvel has, Cap is right there. Like you said, if he's not one of the main characters, like he's he's not one of the characters that they just draw in the background. Like, oh, yeah, look, there he is. Like, nope, he's front, you know, he's pretty front and center, you know, a pretty important character all the time. Mm hmm. I have to agree. I have to agree. All, All right, right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, and his first appearance, you punched Hitler in the face. Every I scene mean, he's in, he commands so presence. Yeah. What about you, Sal? <laughs> I, I can't really add to that. I mean, punching Hitler in the face every you know, <laughs> your first issue is pretty. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty epic. No, no, no. I, I, I think you guys are right. He's he's an epic, iconic character, and like Tim said, he he doesn't back down. He doesn't let you back down. And he just inspires everything and everyone around him, you know. Yeah. So it's a it's a good character to jump into if you've never read comics to read Captain America because, like we said, he is the epic of what this country could be. You know, the epic leader that this country needs yeah. or everybody needs to aspire to. I got him sitting over there. He's 
There you somewhere go. Right there. Yeah, just somewhere right there. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have a couple of couple of side books right there myself. <laughs> yeah, but, um, one or two things. Yep, he's got a Dan's got a couple of things as well. Show that I got, uh, an, I got an action figure over there. You can't see him. Show the shield, Dan. There oh, is. Yeah, let's yeah. let's see. Let's see the shield. Let's see <laughs> the, the tumbler, and then we'll wrap it up. Oh, <laughs> this is not the uh, this is not the one from the movies. This is one that was made uh, about. 20 years ago by this company called Factory X that did a bunch of Marvel props and uh, oh, hold that back up buddy <laughs> they did, uh, so they got yeah the shield I'll show you, you, know, you see the back of it where the straps are and oh, stuff. Yeah. so be honest, be honest did you try throwing it I did not because I'm afraid <laughs> I'm afraid that it would be damaged and it's I'm made of vibranium it won't be afraid you're gonna damage something else you know? <laughs> but yeah that's you know as a cap okay. fan when this when the shield came out i was like i gotta have that gotta have it all, all right. right very good all right ladies and gentlemen this wraps up our episode of comic character of the week uh we talked about captain america we had good stories we had good covers we had good badass moments uh all around so thank you guys for doing that uh let's just go ahead and just do our information one more time and then we'll See you guys in the next one. I am Sal. I am the Slab Guy. You can always find me on YouTube under Sal's Comic Corner. Also on Instagram as the Slab Guy seventy seven. Down below me is Dan the Man Kelly. Dan, give us a tell us where you can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Dan Kelly Art. So go give me a follow as I march towards eight hundred followers. And uh, you can scroll through some of the stuff, and you can see in the past where I have drawn Captain America, and mm-hmm. will go again in the future as I have a blank Captain America sketch cover then I'm trying to decide what to put on it. And stay tuned for our show on Saturday where Dan will show off his jam piece where he yeah. drew Captain oh, America yeah, yeah. and got, got uh, Braun to add another character. Mm-hmm. Won't spoil it, but it's pretty incredible. All right. And then this Tim? guy has got stuff going on. Uh, I allows. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, as always, it is, uh, I'm very humbled and gracious to be a part of Comic Character of the Week with Sal and Dan. It's always a wonderful time, uh, and yeah, it's it's amazing, guys. If you're wanting to be a part of this on a weekly basis, on a daily basis, uh, all you got to do, if you haven't done it yet, is hit the like, share, subscribe, or follow on your favorite social media platform or where we're live streaming right now. And all you got to do to type in to find us is at the Codex Station. That's where we will be. We are so close to a 1,000 subscribers. We need your help to get there. We can't do it on our own. We've already made the maximum amount of alternate accounts that we can. So now we need you. Uh, No, seriously, ladies and gentlemen, be a part of this. Be a part of how awesome this is. Join us in the chat. Talk to us about your favorite characters, our favorite characters, and do it with us on a daily basis. Once again, at the Codex Station for all your Codex needs. Nice. Thank you, Tim. You're welcome. All right, guys. Uh, This goes ahead, and this is a wrap then. Thank you very much. Hope you guys have a 9.8 day.